Hello, everyone, and welcome to our semifinals here from the StarCityGames.com Season 3 Invitational from Atlanta. Cedric Phillips, Patrick Sullivan, we are here in the booth. Nick Miller is down in the future match area as we prepare to watch Jacob Baugh on your left against Adam Snook on your right. It's not Aetherworks, it's Black Green Aggro. Baugh, your number three overall seed, so he will be on the play, and we are underway here as Baugh will start things off in Evolving Wilds. For Adam Snook, it's a Blooming Martian. For me, Patrick, it's an interesting matchup here. Baugh, as I imagine, has gotten through many Black Green Delirium decks here this weekend, but Black Green Aggro, maybe not. It's a tougher matchup, to be sure. Um, you know, the, the more ponderous draws of Black Green Delirium, the, the slower starts without much disruption, with a little bit floated on removal, you know, those are the, the type of draws that Aetherworks really chews up, and, and Snook's a lot lower to the ground, a lot faster, and, and I think that's the recipe you need for this kind of matchup. A Servant of the Conduit here for Jacob. He gets two energy, and we'll head back over to Snook. Again, Snook's deck list has a lot of aggressive elements to it. It also has a little bit of removal there in Grasp of Darkness. The likelihood of Servant of the Conduit living in this matchup, very low. Well, it's a lot better than it was, uh, certainly against Joe Bernal, who sure. has had four murder, four dead weight, four Grasp of Darkness in the main deck. Snook only with five pieces of removal, if memory serves, four Grasp and one dead weight. Mm -hmm. Here's another Servant two more energy, and we'll see if this one is going to survive as Ball will pass the turn back over to Snook. Snook with no real pressure just yet. He does have some one-drops here in Gnarlwood Dryads and two drops in Scrap Heap Scrounger, Smuggler's Copter, and Grim Flare. So he does have the ability to pressure his opponents, and he's got some bigger plays as well in Mindrack Demon and Virgil's Gear Hulk. And Virgil's Gear Hulk, another tool that Snook has that Bernal did not have. Bernal going with Ashkana's instead, and in this matchup, just more numbers, more pressure. That's what the Black Green Aggro deck is in the market for. That's what's important in this matchup. So Virgil's Gear Hulk for Snook will be a lot more powerful for him than Ishkana was for Bernal in the quarterfinals. For now, Snook with a Catacomb Sifter and an Eldrazi Scion. Jacob Baugh is going to play his main deck copy of Sigarda. Well, well, well. We will take a look at that one to be sure. Sigarda is one that really plays a huge role in the mirror can be found via tra uh, Traverse as well. But right now, just a 4-5 or five flyer is good on this board. And not an easy card for Snook to remove. No copies of, of Murder in the list. It's just four Grasp with one Dead Weight. So uh, this card's a little tricky. 4-5 or five flyer, you and humans you control have Hexproof, and you can pay two mana and exile a card from your graveyard to put a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token onto the battlefield. See how Snook wants to work through this. He's going to attack with both of his creatures. A little bit interesting here, simply because dead weights, plural, could work themselves into the equation. But also, this could just be a grasp. Yes. It also is a really good spot for Snook to bluff as well. Mm -hmm. Now, at the end of the day, it is Grasp of Darkness that Snook does have. I'm going to make that into a smaller creature, and Catacomb Sifter will get the job done of taking care of that. Another point of damage will come across, too, from the Eldrazi Scion. Now Snook is going to cash that in and scry. Top card's going to go to the bottom. He's got a colorless mana floating. And now he has a Smuggler's Copter. Really interesting decision there for Ba to block, but I think the there's a twofold logic there. One is, if Snook is on Grasp, he can simply grasp the Servant also. So it's not like he's turning that card into a dead card. Also, that spot is really attractive for Snook to, blo to bluff. So I think you have to call there a percentage of the time regardless. Jacob Ball going to tap a bunch of mana here. He has a Chandra. It's going to start on four. We'll see where he wants to take the powerful Planeswalker. And these were the kind of spots where Bernal was in huge trouble in the quarterfinals. When he didn't have an advanced board and Ball played one of his Planeswalkers, you can see here Snook is much better set up because of cards like Smuggler's Copter and just having more threats in the deck generally. Ball's going to take care of the Catacomb Sifter. You might even see the Servant come across for two. Might as well, right? Uh, I mean, if you're, you're not blocking, you're attacking. Mm-hmm. So here that comes. Pass that turn back. Snook will draw. His deck has a lot of creatures in it, so it would not surprise you to see him be able to turn on the Copter here. Looks like a Grim Flayer is going to allow him to do that, so he will crew the Copter. He will attack. There will be time for him to draw and discard. And this is what I was speaking of before, these Planeswalkers that were so problematic for Bernal. I think Snook will be much more able to consistently manage. Well, he's already taken care of one. Snook just deciding what he wants to discard. He's going to go with Liliana. 
Three types in the graveyard right now. He'll play a Swamp. And we'll see if he's going to want to play anything else here, if he's just going to want to pass the turn back. He does have another Grasp in hand, too. But I think we're just going to pass back over the ball. He'll draw a card. Well, the deck is called Aetherworks, after all. But we haven't seen much of it from Ball, actually, throughout mm -hmm. this top eight. And when he's had it, it has not been good. There's a forest for Jacob. So has Ball, did Ball miss a trigger somewhere along the line? Because he's played two Aether Hubs and two Servants. He's had he, to use a little bit of it. There was a turn where... Uh, correct, yeah, yeah, yeah. he a, did use a, he used Servants for mana. Yeah, a couple, a couple of turns he's had to use that. Servant will die to a grasp, and now we're going to head back over to Snook. There's a Mine Rack Demon. Scrap Heap Scrounger is an artifact. Deadweight is enchantment. Delirium is online now. He'll use that demon to turn on the copter, and now this is going to be an attack for six. Time for Snook to draw and discard. If Snook is able to break Surf here, it's a pretty big deal. Definitely. I mean, he's got to pick one up on the draw at some point regardless to win this match. And he's going to see him connect there for seven. And now... And we're going to take a look at the top couple with Grim Flayer. And with a Blossoming Defense in hand, Snook isn't even in that much trouble against Ishkana. He can power right through that. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some chump blocking, and it'll take some turns, but it's not like he'll be locked out of combat. And that was another problem that Bernal had. He didn't have pump effects, and his creatures weren't sized well enough to reliably push past Ishkana. Ball will draw. I think he's in some trouble this game. He'll play Woodweaver's Puzzle Knot. That's three more energy. That's three more life. We could see him do that yet again in just a little bit. That card looks a lot worse when it's not eating up multiple turns. Mm -hmm. There's another Mind Rack Demon, Trigger. It's not even worth one turn at this point. Crew and attack. Baw is going to sacrifice the Woodweaver's Puzzle Knot now, get three life, go up to 18, but he's going to fall a lot lower than that. Snook is going to draw on Discard Smuggler's Copter. And there goes Narl with Dryad. 4, 8, 9, 10, 11 is going to bring Baw down to 7. Play a land. I think Snook may have missed the Grim Flare trigger, but with the last card in hand being a Blossom Defense and a Forest available, I think he still might just be fine. Yeah. I think we are about wrapped up here. Emrakul isn't really worth very much. And it's kind of off the top. Would be a turn or two maybe, mm -hmm. but really wouldn't stabilize this board. Yeah, that is going to do it. Adam Snook's going to win game number one here over Jacob Baugh. Black Green Aggro going to break serve here against Nair Aetherworks. Pretty impressive stu stuff there from Snook. Now remember, first two games pre-sideboard, last three games with sideboard, so we won't take a look just yet. But you said it. In order for him to win this match, he's probably got to break I mean, he has to break serve at some point, obviously. Yep, right. uh, it's a pretty good spot to do it in his game number one. And you can see the, the differences that we talked about before we got into this match uh, of Snook's build versus Bernal's build. They all manifested right there. Mm -hmm. Planeswalkers were quite a bit worse. Snook had a lot more pressure. Uh, and, and those were the vulnerabilities that, that Bernal exposed a little bit there in the quarterfinal match in the games that he won. When Ball was behind, it was very challenging for him to stabilize. Yeah, I, I'm not... I don't want to say I'm not sure how well the deck catches up because it is a deck that has Ishkana, but in that in that situation, the Planeswalker is trying to use those to catch up. That's kind of off the table. Right, and, and, you, and it's often a one-two combo that's required, too, with, with Aether Marvelworks in this kind of matchup. We talk a lot about, you know, you hit an Emrakul and then suddenly life is good. Against the really redundant beatdown decks, that's not necessarily the case. You really need the pairing of Ishkana alongside Emrakul to make the battlefield clogged enough so that when you mind slaver their attack, they lose a lot and they can't do anything on the follow up. In that spot there, Emrakul would have done very little. It would have swallowed up one attacker and then Snook could have just powered right past it. So Baugh is going to have to assemble uh, both of those cards in the matchup, uh, most likely to really set up the good mind slaver attack. Well, both players are going to take a look at their seven cards here. Jacob Ball will be on the play once again. Didn't work out well for him in the last game. We'll see if things end up a little bit better for him this game. Adam Snook sitting comfortably in the lead, and it looks like he will take a mulligan. So, he'll be taking a look at six cards, and as he does that, we're going to talk about the feature match area here on Twitch, which you can certainly join today. You get the opportunity to decide the quarterfinals whenever we do have our opens next year during 2017. Plenty of them coming down the pipeline. Custom emoticons and badges for you to use. It's only $4.99 a month, or you can 
use that kind of new Amazon Twitch partnership subscription as well. Twitch.tv slash SCG Live is the place to be to join the feature match here, here on SCG Live. We want to thank everyone who's already done so and is continuing to enjoy those benefits. We just ask that you stay polite out there. Keep it clean. Keep it classy. It's really not that hard <laughs> in spite of evidence that suggests otherwise. Yes. Snook will keep the six. He'll scry. And he'll leave it on top. And away we go. Game trail revealing a forest and traverse. We'll see which land ball wants to search up here. He'll go with the basic planes. Again, not hard for his build of Naya to be able to get to all three colors. Yep. He has Traverse and a Tune. He also has Ether Hub as well. A Hissing Quagmire is where Adam Snook will start. There is a little bit of an opportunity cost. Chandra is, is double red, and Ball doesn't always have double red on four. Uh, Vessel of Nascency is quietly a double green card. Mm -hmm. You'd like to be able to play and activate. There's been a couple times where Ball hasn't been able to do that because he hasn't had a second green. Uh, but the mana has been reliable for the most part. Servant of the Conduit here from Ba. Two energy given. A forest and a scrap heap scrounger there from Adam Snook. Aggressive elements, well, he's got plenty of those as we head back over to Ba. He'll draw. We know he's got at least the planes in his hand. Looks like some more lands, however. And there is that planes. And now here's a Marvel. He's got to use an energy to play it, so he's got one energy left. He passed this turn back over to Adam Snook. Snook will draw. Taking a look at Snook's, Snook's deck list, this is not a card he can get off of the battlefield. Yeah, it's just there. Though Ball's got a lot of work to do to get up to five, five more energy from here. Another scrounger here. And we're going to head over to Jacob Ball. If he has Woodweaver's Puzzle Knot, it's very easy. Yes. Otherwise, it requires stringing together multiple cards. Jacob will play a Vessel. He will play an Evolving Wilds, and he's already on his way there now. Between Servant maybe having opportunity to block, cracking an Essel, cracking an Evolving Wilds, well, that's a lot more energy. Yep. Gets him up to four, but that's still short. Snook and, will attack here. And it, and it also means he's really all in on the first Marvel activation, bringing up something good. Yes. It's not like he has the cushion here to just keep spinning if he happens to miss. Jacob's going to start by activating his vessel. Take a look at the top couple of cards. Two Marvels, an Emrakul, and an Aether Hub. Well, he needs energy, and the rest of these cards aren't doing a whole lot, so I imagine it's Aether Hub unless there's something really weird going on with his hand. Hub it will be, it appears. Yes. They're actually going to go to the graveyard. So he's up to two energy now. See if Ball has any interest in doing some blocking. Looks like the answer is yes. Going to jump in front of a scrap heap scrounger. Those will trade. Servant will go to the graveyard, so an energy is given. The follow up here for Snook is a Mind Rack Demon. It's been very important for him to have that card. It's a very good one in this matchup. Yep. Nothing too relevant put, in, put into the graveyard. He does have artifact creature land and instant, however, so Delirium is on the line. And some Scrap Heap Scroungers to get back from the graveyard. Ball up to four energy after he sacrifices an Evolving Wild, so he's going to dig a land out of the deck. It'll be green or red mana, and he's going to go with red. Ball uh, also on Delirium at this point, so Ishkana is a big draw. But again, still needs some help. Still needs to pick up some energy from somewhere. It has enchantment, land, sorcery, and creature in the graveyard does Jacob. The Aether Hub we know about gets him to five, mm -hmm. but that's still short, and he has no way to get anything on the battlefield into the graveyard for that sixth energy. Chandra may have been the draw. He'll play Hub up to five. And Ishkana with Delirium is just about as good as it gets. That's perfect both for stabilizing and for forcing Snook to plow through the Ishkana and the Spiders. That's going to trigger the Aetherworks Marvel a bunch of times. That gets him up to six energy, and he gets at least one shot at it. 
to Snook we go. Well, the Gearhawk might change some things. Okay. Well. He'll power up the Minerak Demon and the Scrap Heap Scrounger, and here we go. A lot of risks come along kind of with this line of play in terms of opening up yourself to an Aetherworks Marble activation, but this is what the card Snook has allows him to do. Mm -hmm. And you're also only giving him the one crack at it. I like the double block here to get the Scrounger off the battlefield. Makes a lot of sense to me. It's a 5-4 at this stage. This will give Baugh two energy. He's going to take a real punch in the face in the air. Well, he's getting one energy off of this because this is not enough to kill both spiders. Very true, very true. But he only needs the one. It, 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 all, it doesn't really matter all that much. Looks like we're going to see a block here as well, a spider jumping in front of the Mind Rack Demon to save a little bit of damage, it looks like. Yep. I think the thought process might be, I might not get this opportunity later. Some of those stray removal spells uh, might take out those spiders. Exactly. You know, playing against uh, someone with... Uh, Grass and dead weights. If you happen to miss on the Aetherworks Marvel activation and the leftover in his hand is removal, you may not get an opportunity to chump block down the line. I'm curious, however, if there will be any other blocks. It looks like Ba is just going to go with this. Ishkana will bite the dust up to six energy. And now will Ba spin it now? It looks like he will. So top six, let's see how he does. There are, of course, a lot of big hits here, and I think he found the best of the bunch, my friends. Yep, there is an Emrakul. There it is. And the battlefield is pretty sticky here. Yes, it is. This, is. this is where he wants to be. Right, and you have a, he has a Chandra left over in his hand to take care of the Virtuous Gear Hulk uh -huh. if he's feeling so inclined. Then you have one creature against your sea of blockers. Really good position. Ball will play a Forest... You mentioned Chandra. I think we're about to see her arrive. We do. Going to take care of the Gearhawk. Fall down the one counter. And I'm not sure if we'll see an attack with Emrakul or any of these spiders. But this is obviously a very, very good position here for Jacob Ball. Well, I like sending in the spiders. It's basically a freebie because you have the Emrakul back on defense against the Mindrack Demon that you could force to attack and still can't really play anything else. I do like the opportunity here for Baugh to say, I'm going to activate your Hissing Quagmire and double block with spiders. Like, he can, sure. he can do a little, he can also just activate the Quagmire and deadweight it now. Yeah, no, you that's know? fair. Some, there's some good stuff to do here for Jacob. Most, most Emrakul turns look like this. And the three points don't really matter a whole lot here. Yeah. He's going to wipe them out here and be able to wrap it up pretty easily from there. Ball going to activate a Hissing Quagmire and deadweight it. Had a feeling he would do that. That Mindrack Demon is going to uh, make a bold attack. It will bite the dust. Emrakul will eat that. And Ball says, that's, that's good enough for me. Yep. Now it is your turn. All you have and to do is beat a 13-13. Here's a Mindrack Demon. Love him soldiering on here. Oh, you got to play it out. You got to play this Top out. Top four in the tournament, man. You got to play it out. Ball will untap. It's time for him to draw. Jacob obviously in very, very good shape right now, but you just want to make sure I don't do anything stupid to lose this game. Yep. Maybe a second Emrakul in hand, which I believe Ba can cast by pausing the Chandra for mana. We've seen him make that line of play before. Plus two here. Yep, there's another Emrakul. Yep, Adam Snook says, we are all set. Jacob Ba going to tie things up here against Adam Snook. It's 1-1 between Nia Aetherworks and Black Green Aggro. Now we get to go to the sideboards, and we're going to start with Adam Snook, who is on the play here for game number three. He's got two Ishkana, Graf Widow of his own, three Kalidus Trader of Get, two Deadweight, three Transgress the Mind, two Lost Legacy, two Natural State, and a Flying Tendrils. A little bit different 
than what we saw from Joe Bernal, but I think a lot of the plan remains the same. Yeah, he does. He isn't nearly as redundant for this kind of matchup because he doesn't have nearly the same number of dead cards that Bernal had in the quarterfinals. I like the transgress the minds, and I like the lost legacies here. Uh, maybe you shave out a little bit of your top end of creatures. Maybe you shave out a little bit of removal, uh, but Snook's going to be sideboarding a little light here. Uh, the natural states and the uh, flame tendrils are for other matchups, and I wouldn't want Kalidus or Ishkana in my deck. For Jacob Baugh, it's a very similar matchup to what we commentated on a little bit earlier. Three codes left return, three tireless tracker, a world breaker, another copy of Sagarda, Heron's Grace, three tiers of Alicut, two natural state, a Nissa Vital Force, and an Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger. You think your sideboard's somewhat the same? I mean, he's got a sideboard a little bit different here, I think, because uh, he's playing against a much faster deck. So the Nissa Vital Force, for example, that we saw Ball bring in against Bernal in the quarterfinals, I think may stay on the sidelines here. Uh, you could talk me into the Kozilek's Return, the Tireless Tracker, maybe the World Breaker as a little bit of a hedge against Lost Legacy, and uh, you know, if you feel like you can slow the game down, something that's fine to hard cast. But I think he's want to He's going to want to keep his deck a little bit lower to the ground than we saw against Bernal because Snook's deck is much faster. Well, those are the options there for both players. Snook is already shuffling up and getting ready to go, so he's got a sideboard plan in mind for this particular matchup, while Ball might be sorting a few things out. So while those players do take a moment, we do want to remind everyone that the uh, first week of January, Star City Games will be hosting a Grand Prix over here in Wonderful, and I want to make sure I say this right, Louisville. Louisville, Louisville, Kentucky. It's a little bit of legacy action. We got some cool play mats. We got some cool tournaments. And we've got more information for you right now. On January 6th through the 8th, make plans to be part of Magic the Gathering history when StarCityGames.com proudly presents Grand Prix Louisville. Register by December 9th for the legacy format main event to compete for thousands of dollars in prizes and receive an exclusive play mat featuring legacy staple and Kaladesh invention, Lotus Petal. Select the three-day infinite challenge package to compete in all challenge events for one low price, while also walking away with the exclusive Lotus Petal Playmat. All Friday challenges are also Grand Prix trials. Come out early and compete for buys in the main event and more chances to claim a Lotus Petal Playmat. Prefer 100 card formats? Register for the Ultimate Commander package to play in four Commander on-demand events and take home a Commander vs. Playmat and Ultimate Guard flip and tray deck case. And don't forget to come say hello to Grand Prix Louisville's many special guests, including cosplayer Christine Sprinkle and an artist alley full of fan favorites, headlined by guest of honor Rob Alexander. Be part of Magic the Gathering history. Register for Grand Prix Louisville today. January 6th through the 8th, Grand Prix Louisville. Come and hang out, meet some awesome artists, get yourself a Lotus Petal playmat and a whole bunch more. You battling? Oh, yeah. Sweet. Yeah. You going to dust off the Entombs? Most likely. Okay. Most likely, yeah. Most likely a reanimation strategy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Jacob Baugh, do you think he's ever been called Baugh with the Baugh? I bet someone's made that joke. You think so? And I bet he either rolled or narrowed his eyes a little bit, okay. let out a little bit of a sigh. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe he said it audibly. Maybe it was just inside of his body. And... His day was a little bit more sad as a result. A little worse. That's my guess. You don't think ball with a ball makes the day a little bit better? No, I do not. Okay. Absolutely not. Okay, I just wanted to confirm we're on the same page about that. Looks like Snook is going to head on down to six cards. For Jacob, the 27-year-old from Waterloo, Illinois, 11 open top eights, two open wins, and his first invitational top eight here this weekend in Atlanta. You know, we said in the last match, and I think it's worth repeating, not the loudest guy, not the biggest personality in the room, but from week one of 2016, this was the goal for him and all the members of Team Card Hoarders to get to the Players' Championship. And there's a couple of them headed that way. Yeah, and congratulations to him. I'm sure he and the rest of his teammates are very, very excited about this accomplishment. And you can just see the resume, 11 top eights, two wins, and now his first invitational top eight, just a great year for Baugh. It's been fun to just watch him as a player just grow over the past handful of years here on the SCG Tour. This, thus far, his crowning achievement. And, hey, two weeks from now, that could be even bigger for him. For sure. But I know a goal of his was to play among the 16 best in the SCG Tour at the end of the year, and he's going to get the opportunity to do just that two weeks from now as he starts things off with an evolving wilds. But Adam Snook could be joining him. And my... my my biggest critique of Ball as a player is uh, having watched him play a lot of matches. He's occasionally a little fast and loose and gets a bit sloppy with his operations. I think if he cleans that up, uh, he has the potential to be 
one of the best players on the tour. His hand here from the transgress, you'll find an Ulamaga World Breaker, a Servant, a Harness Lightning, a Kozilex Return, and two Forest. This hand strikes me as maybe a little fast and loose. I think this hand plays. Yeah? You, you know, you, you have a threat to play, you have a removal spell, you have a sweeper. Yes, you you would prefer not to have both the big O's in the hand, most likely. Maybe, maybe just one, maybe zero. Uh, that doesn't feel like a mulligan, though. I would bet a lot his first draw step was Ulamog. Yeah, that's or World Breaker, or World Breaker yeah. right? One of the two. What did you call those big O's? Some big O's. Some big O's. <laughs> okay. And he's gonna take Kozilek's return. That's gone for good. And Ba will sacrifice the evolving wilds. I feel like to get a mountain. Yeah. I like the word lug a lot too. Lug is good. Use it to describe. It's one of the those words you can use to describe magic cards or people. True. I really like. True. I prefer doof. Yep. Ball will play a forest. Here comes the servant. Two energy on the way. Now, it felt like when we watched earlier Ba against Bernal, that Ba shaved down on some number of Aetherworks Marvel. Perhaps he just didn't draw them in the long games that we saw, which would be a little bit strange. But it felt like he either shaved them entirely or, and certainly shaved down on some number. And I, here I would be more inclined to leave them all in. Snook has less discard he's bringing to the table. And just on top of that, you know, I, I, Ball could win the game just with a Planeswalker on a stable battlefield. That's a much harder recipe to put together against Snook because he can just put a lot more stuff onto the battlefield. Catacomb Sifter here from Snook. He's got his 1-1 Eldrazi Scion as well as we head back over to Ball. It's a forest. This is a vessel. And Ba will pass the turn back over to Snook. Snook will draw. See how Adam wants to move forward here on his fourth turn of the game. It appears as though his hand has Deadweight and Virtuous Gearhulk. The Gearhulk's a little awkward here because he knows about the harness. But in theory, he could just load up on the Gearhulk if he's Good. feeling so inclined. Good. It's an option. Yeah. <laughs> you can kind of see Snook thinking here, all right, I can make the safe play of just dead weight and attack and set up Gear Hulk for next turn, or do I just let it rip? I always love to let it rip. He's going to play a little bit safer here. He's going to come in with the Catacomb Sifter. And if he's doing this, I, I imagine it means he's just going to load up on the Gear Hulk. Well, the thing is, loading up on the Gearhawk isn't exactly safe. Yeah, because there's a trigger, and you have to decide what you're targeting. Yeah, so this isn't exactly yeah. the safest of plays. Yeah. Right, maybe a split is better here? Well, Jacob has Harness, and right, he has yeah, two yeah, energy. You've got to chop this up. Yeah, so... I think this works in Jacob's favor. Oh, yeah. this is really good. I yeah. mean, you can trade a harness with a with a with a, a drawsy oh, and a yeah. yeah. This is really really good for Jacob. A bit of a misstep there from Snook, I think. Yeah, I think that 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 needs to look something like pre-combat. Do this. Put two or three counters on the sifter and one counter on my gear hulk. He has an incentive to put more on the sifter because of Nahiri being a way to get the gear hulk off the battlefield. But in any event, that loading up on one there. Uh, plays right into the harness. Also, I think we had no scry from the Catacomb Sifter El right. Scion. He may have scryed, may have missed it on our end. And this is another interesting thing. You can see Boz approaching this matchup a little bit differently here. We saw no puzzle knots mm -hmm. against Bernal. He was trying to play a totally different game. If Ball has left in the puzzle knots here, it means he's left in much more of the combo, or at least that's my guess. Well, we've seen the second puzzle knot here off of the uh, off of the vessel, so those are back in the deck. And we saw zero in three relatively long sideboarded games against Bernal. Correct. So even though these are both black green decks with a lot of the same cards, Ball is approaching the matchup much differently. Snook will play a hissing quagmire. He's going to come across here for two with the catacomb sifter, and now here is a dead way to take care of the servant. And that is it for Snook's turn. So not a great past couple of turns here for Adam as we head back over to Jacob. Yeah, I think Snook may have just forgotten a little bit about both how Virtuous Gear Hulk targets and the functionality of Harness Lightning. He'll come across here for two. 
Ball's got a lot of life to work with, though. Mind Rack Demon could change some things in this game, so there will be a trigger. Blossoming Defense among those cards. Scrap Heap Scrounger probably the most important of the bunch. Yeah, that's, that's quite a find here. Yep, and he's got the land to play as well to get back the Scrounger, assuming there's creatures down there, and we know there's at least one Gearhawk, so he can rebuild his board pretty quickly here. For Baugh, we're going to head back his way. I think we might see him blow this. Yep, get three more life, push himself back up to 20. And now the big question is for Jacob, as he has six energy, is where's the Marvel? He'll draw a card. That's not it. And we know his hand was uh, charitably described as a little clunky earlier on in the game. It was uh, full of big O's. Some big O's. Yeah. This look is going to get back the Scrap Heap Scrounger from his graveyard. He will exile a Grim Flare. Now it's time to untap and draw. Looks like he just picked up the land at Snook. I think contemplating whether or not he wants to load up the Quagmire into a potential Kozilex return. Still looks good enough to me, because you can still get the Scrounger back. Well, here come the Knuckleheads. We'll take a look and see what Ball wants to potentially do here. There is Cozy's return. Not the end of the world. Yeah, this is fine. He gets a, a scry or two for mm -hmm. his trouble. The Scrounger comes right back. Yep. That's why I like fi firing up the Quagmire here. I don't think Kozilek's return is really all that bad. Snook will leave the top card on top from the scrying. Ball's going to fall down to 14. And Snook will pass the turn back. Ball will draw. The interesting thing about this spot for Jacob, he's got some really good draws and some truly terrible ones. And also look at the lands here. He does not have access to double red. Mm -hmm. Chandra's off. He doesn't have a planes. That means Nahiri's off the table as well. And he can't cast two copies of Harness Lightning in the same turn also. Here comes Snook. Harness Lightning. And I'm not sure how I feel about doing this now as opposed to at the end of Snook's turn when Snook was tapped out. Because if he has Blossoming Defense there, it's a catastrophe. It's very bad if that's the case. That is for sure. I mean, it's an extra six, and the demon's still there. Mm -hmm. Snook is going to scry the top card to the bottom here. Remember, whenever another creature dies, it's like Catacomb Sifter. Snook gets to scry a little bit. Now, here's another creature in Grim Flare, so Ball will draw again. Now, if he draws Marvel, it doesn't do anything. Ishkana always does something, though. And she has arrived. Three spiders in tow. Back to Snook we go. Big draw here. Could really use a Gear Hulk. Wouldn't be bad. Gear Hulk typically pretty good. It's one of the best ways for green aggro decks to plow through Ishkana. Pretty hard to beat this card with removal spells, but pump effects can be really powerful. Here come the knuckleheads. We'll Love it. We'll see how Ball wants to block here. Now, if you're Ball, you do have to worry a little bit about Grasp, but you're also in a sideboard game. You might think to yourself, okay, well, you know, would he have Grasp after sideboard? That'd be a little bit strange. Well, I don't know. If he left in dead weight, there's a good chance he's left in Grasp. Mm -hmm. Remember, he's got one dead weight main, two in the sideboard. Not sure he would bring any more dead weights in. Right. But he's shown some commitment to cheap removal, so yes, you, have to re you have to respect it here. I think of these creatures, the one you want to get off the battlefield the most is Grim Flayer. Yep. I mean, it's the best of the bunch, and it has Trample to boot, which makes future blocks complicated, and makes Virtuous Gear Hulk a much more threatening draw. So mm -hmm. if you can get the Trampler off the battlefield, that's a good place to start. Makes you wonder what the follow-ups are in Snook's hand, however. Did he draw a Grasp here? He's reaching for his hand now. I think he may have. I just don't have... You have to worry about Blossoming Defense. You have to worry about Grasp. He's going to order the blockers. Actually, you don't have to worry about anything. So, two scries. One to the bottom. 
next one to the bottom. Follow-up? Copter. Snook will pass the turn back over to Baugh. That felt a little, with nothing going on there, that felt a little early for an Alpha Strike to me, especially when you're drawing to Virtuous Gear Hulk. And Baugh will draw and play a Servant of the Conduit. Two energy up to six now. And a Mana Fixer, too. Yep. Fixer and Acceleration, all that good stuff. Yep. Scrounger going to come back, exile the Grim Flare. We'll head back over to Adam Snook. Time for him to draw a card. Because it's not like Snook was in crisis mode last turn. Not he just did, yet. He didn't have to just get some spiders off the battlefield or make a desperate attack. The waiting game wasn't all that bad. I mean, we know boss hand is a little soft. We know it's just a lot of expensive creatures right now. Maybe he was hoping that he, his attack is so threatening that he's bluffing something that could get Baugh to miss block. Here's an Arwa Dryad. Well, he's just going to keep coming in here. I mean, he's kind of... Right. It feels like he's made this decision that I'm going to play this game this particular way. Here come the attackers. There will be a trigger here from the copter. Snook will discard a forest. Just left with a land in hand. It appears. Some blocking to be done, it looks like. I mean, he can double up on the sifter with his two creatures and put his Kana in front of the copter, and looks pretty good to me. Looks like Ball wants to go about doing things this way. He may really value Servant, given how expensive his hand is well, right we, now. We that, know he has World Breaker. Right. That, this is respectable, too. There'll be a scry here. Top guard to the bottom. Also, World Breaker should bring back Cozy's return. Oh, there you go. Yep, then that's... And that looks really good. Yeah. We're going over ball. He'll draw a card. A tune. He'll play that. Get a little more energy here, Will Jacob. Probably going to search for a mountain here. Go with the planes instead. Fair enough. And again, I think Snook kind of playing this game like he's got a bunch of bolts in his deck that he could finish the game off with. But with something like Virtuous Gearhook, when you're just a little bit behind on the battlefield, I feel like you can hold up. Fair enough. Looks like Snook has just drawn and said, let's, uh, let's go. I'm getting in here. The only thing that can really happen here is it feels like, like blocks look straightforward and all that good stuff. You always have to worry about blossoming defense and grasp. Well, the, here's, a, here's what's nice about this attack from Snook's side is the only thing for Servant to really do is go in front of the Scrounger, and that's great. Yeah. Get the Scrounger right back. Harness Lightning's going to go after something in combat. But it can't be. block the 2-3 three or the 3-3 three three profitably. Yeah. Going to go after Narwood Dryad, maybe. Jacob's not really sure what he wants to target with this. He knew he wanted to cast it, just wasn't sure what he wanted to do with it. Yeah, I, I think Paul's play from last turn is a little too risky for my taste, unless he has seven mana already rolled up. I think it would have been fine to double block the Sifter. You still leave a Spire left over. You still have Ishkana. You still have a Harness in your hand. You have a lot of time to find that mana. Harness Lightning's going to take care of that Narwood Dryad, however. Top card's going to stay on top. Now it's time for Ball to do some blocking. Yeah, I like these blocks a lot. Yep. I don't want to lose to random Blossoming Defense. You might make the argument, well, he would have just, cost, would have just cast Blossoming Defense to save his creature. Maybe not. Yeah, the way this works out, I mean, he could have used this Servant to basically trade with the Sifter last turn as opposed to trading with the Scrounger this turn. Mm -hmm. and, and that's quite a bit different. Now, Ball may not block this way, but I, I, I'm okay with this. I want to play as many turns as I can. I also just want to get the Sifter and all that scrying off the battlefield. Also, if you run no blocks on the Scrounger and he has Blossoming Defense, you die. You just die, yeah. Now, you might, again, you might think that he would have just cast it, but not, no guarantee I of don't that. Know, so, uh, but Snook has also shown like a range of bluffing and willingness to make very aggressive attacks in the match already. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't round down to zero. Yep. I don't think it's straight up that he would just Blossoming Defense there in the face of a Harness. Here's a Vessel. Bog on a break a vessel, it looks like on the main phase as he's organizing his mana a touch. 
Top four. Ishkana, Aether Hub. Looks, Looks like, like Tears of Valakut. Yep. And then in a tune with Aether. That seventh land is of some value here. You know he <laughs> wants Worldbreaker. Yep. It makes things a lot easier. It's got reach. It can take care of Scrounger for good or something like that. Like, it's got some value in a spot like this. But it's tough because Worldbreaker off the top, if you cast it, you can lose just to Virgil's Gear Hulk off the top. Here's an 8 8. It's bigger than your 5 7. Mm -hmm. And Worldbreaker Exile target artifact, enchantment, or a land. Ball's going to take the hub. Play the hub. You get a little energy. And yeah, no attacks. No attacks ever. <laughs> <laughs> Not feeling that frisky. Over to Snook. He'll play Narwhal Dry and pass that turn back. We're going to Ball now. You notice Snook did not get back the Scrounger. I actually think that's smart. Very savvy play there. Because if he gets it back, we know Ball has to seven mana. He'll just World Breaker it, get rid of it for good. Also, the Scrounger can't attack. Right. Now, Ball is getting in here with Ishkana. And now, okay, makes some sense. Play another Ishkana. Load the board back up with Spiders. Yep. If Snook wants to slow play this a little bit, you can just go back to your second Ishkana. You even have the mana and the access to black mana through Aether Hub to start activating if he tries to really slow play this. Yeah, and you can see the body language here from Snook. It makes some sense. He's in some real trouble here. He's kind of, he's approaching getting locked out of this. Mm -hmm. Might be thinking about the Scrounger now. Yep. Going to get back. The 3 2, removing the Catacomb Sifter. He'll draw a card. He's found another land, and I'm going to see an attack. I mean, got to play it out. Yep. There's your blocks. Ishkana will trade with the Narwa Dryad. Scrounger ate a spider. Interesting there. No double block there from Ba. He wants this thing exiled via the World Breaker. Yeah, which I think makes a lot of sense to me. Now, it looks like he just drew a Marvel. I don't think that really changes things. Yeah, I think this is still the same play. The, the Marvel is a little risky to play right now. You can just you can whiff and potentially die. World Breaker will take care of that for good. No attacks there with the Spiders playing very conservative, which I think he can afford to do. Don't want anything weird to go wrong as there's a Catacomb right. Sifter. You're deep into the tournament. You're deep into a game. You may overthink something or underthink something, it's just a lot easier to say, you know what, I'm going to turtle up. I've got the Zulamog. I just drew a Marvel. Don't want to get too risky. Yup. And it's pretty painful here for Snook. I mean, he came up a little bit short this game. It looks likely that Ball is stabilized here. He's going to be able to clean this up in a few turns. And that, that turn with the Virtuous Gear Hulk, it, it, it goes back to that. I, it's, it, you have to imagine it was worth a total of five points at least. Especially with Boss stumbles in this game. Yep. Now Boss starting to organize his graveyard and seeing what types do I have down there. Never a good feeling if you're on the opposite side of the table. That's why it's not a good feeling. Yep. New story. It's a new story. It's a new story. Who knows? Well, it is a new story this time because Snook has a Catacomb Sifter so he can sack the Scion and scry something horrible to the top of his deck. Okay. And then he gets to take his turn and draw a land or whatever. Uh -huh. So that's a little different. That's a little different. That's a little different than the Miracle Stories we've seen so far this week. And Jacob Ball able to get that game here over Adam Snook. He's up 2-1. to one. Snook will be on the plane. You can see the two players talking a little bit. I imagine it's about the Gearhawk play and Snook just making the error there. Right. No other way to I mean, really play. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the how you split up on the Gearhawk there is a little complicated. Um, but you can't load up there with the harness uh, in hand. I think pre-combat, you can. you could also just go ahead and dead weight the Servant the harness probably gets that cast that turn, and then the next turn looks really good. Mm -hmm. But uh, Snook there, I guess, with a little bit of uncertainty about how Virtuous Gear Hulk and Harness interact and how the targeting all works. And uh, as a result, not only a bad card quality loss, but a mana efficiency thing as well. Well, these players are playing to qualify for 
the Players' Championship. Jacob Ball is already headed there because he had one heck of a tournament here. And you see the names and the faces that will be going to the Star City Game Center in Roanoke, Virginia, December 17th and the 18th. Season 1 brought us Max McFeedy, Jeff Hoagland, Jerry Thompson, Andrew Tenjum. Season 2 brought us Liam Lonergan, Tom Ross, Andrew Jessup, and Kevin Jones. Season 3, which we're finishing up here in just a couple of hours, well, that brought us Jim Davis, Todd Stevens, Joe Lissette, Caleb Shear, Bradley Carpenter, Jacob Ball, Brad Nelson, and we're not sure. Still to be determined. Todd Anderson could work his way in here in a couple of different ways, and once we get to those scenarios, we will certainly talk about them, but none of it matters up until this point. But I think Todd disagrees. I Todd, Todd disagrees. Todd disagrees. Todd I think disagrees. he would probably tell you it matters right now. Todd disagrees. Todd, Todd is driving home right now from Atlanta back to Roanoke. It's about a seven-hour drive. I'm sure he's listening to us on his phone mm -hmm. and really hoping Jacob wins. <laughs> because for Todd to make the Players' Championship, he needs Jacob to win this tournament or Jim Davis to beat Jacob Ball in the finals. That's it. If he does that, if those things happen, he's got two outs mm -hmm. to play in the Players' Championship. So Todd was probably happy that the Virgil was Gearhawk. Yep. Was targeted by four counters. Might, might want to, you know, pull over a gas station in South Carolina or however you're driving back and just pull over and watch the next couple of hours. Oh, I think he's making Tom drive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, don't think, I don't think he's the one behind the wheel. Right, yeah, the, yeah. the boss is that's driving right, the That's right, that's right, that's right. Both players are going to keep their hand. We are underway here in game number four of our semifinals. It's a swamp for Ball. It's an evolving wild. Let's see what Snook has on turn two. He's got a creature. It's a scrap heap scrounger. A lot of pressure there. Ball will sacrifice. The evolving wilds, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think he's sacrificing and not just grabbing his deck at random. Right. That looks right to me. Yeah. <laughs> Man, scroungers really push. It's a good card. It's a good card. Wasn't Despoiler of Souls a rare from, like, the pre literally the previous set? Yeah, not a good card. <laughs> sure, I'm not saying that card's, yeah. you know, that's the ceiling or whatever. It's just... Oh, we can take a look at the Despoiler. I'll take a look at that. All right, well, you lose toughness, and it's way harder to cast. And you also have to exile a second creature. And in exchange, you get... It's a horror, <laughs> so that's... <laughs> That's something, I'm guessing. In exchange, you get nothing. Yeah. That's what you get. This has a more loaded creature type, too. Construct is referenced in a variety of places. Also really good that it's an artifact now, creature. Now, an artifact can also be a drawback. True. So it's not, you know. But it's, the, it's, it's a little better. Yep. It's a little bit better. Now, Ball lost his Servant of the Conduit to a dead weight. Here comes the Scrounger yet I'm again. I'm saying, if you, if you were specu speculating on Despoiler of Souls, you are disappointed with that printing. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a transgress the mine. <laughs> transgress the mine here from Snook. He's going to see a Marvel, Ooh. a Tears, an Ember Cool, and a couple of lands. Yikes. It stinks. Yeah, it's not great. That is a stinky hand. Yeah, I'm taking the Ember Cool. That's, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. Just cut off the top end. <laughs> Make him play you straight up. He's just going to draw a Marvel anyway. All right. Here's a Wilds. We're going to head back over to Jacob Ball. Ball will draw. Doesn't look like he drew much. Going to play a forest. We might just get punched a bunch by this scrounger here. Sure. We could be headed to game number five in no time. I will say as powerful as these Aetherworks decks are, any version of them, they got some awkward draw steps at times. Yep. You don't get to just tutor for your one, draw, yeah. for your one of all the time. Yeah. Sometimes you draw those Emrakuls and you don't want to, or that Ulamog. Grim Flayer, the draw there for Adam Snook. He'll attack for three more damage. Ball going to fall down to 11. The follow-up is a Grim Flayer. Sorcery Enchantment land in the graveyard right now for Snook as we head over to Ball. Ball pretty far away from Delirium on his own end, just a creature in a land down there. There's a Vessel. That's not bad. That'll get him an enchantment in the graveyard to work his way towards Ishkana if a lot goes right, as he's going to play a Plains. And I think we might see him crack now. A little risky to crack now, mm -hmm. but we're going to see him go that direction. Yep, cracking into the face of a deck with discard spells. little risky. Top couple of cards here. Servant, Servant. Nahiri, another Vessel. If he wants to play a Servant, he's going to have to use the hub to do it. It'll be down in energy, but then plus two, so plus one overall. And I'm not sure how great Servant is on this board. It's also pretty risky because it's realistic for Snook to just have a creature removal spell. Mm -hmm. Which he has actually in his hand. He's yep. got a grasp in his hand right now. 
So he'll go up to four energy total. And now there's Grasp to take care of that. So you would think maybe he wants to sideboard out some of the removal here. But that's not the case as we head back to Snook. And an instant being played there is pretty big too because that's Delirium. Yep. And that's Blossoming four, Defense. Yep. That's four, eight, that's 11 exactly. Well, well, well. Adam Snook will tie her up real quick. They'll be heading to game number five here in just a moment. So something nice there for, for Baugh, obviously losing the game stinks and not being on your way to the final stinks. But you at least know that Blossoming Defense is still in the deck, and that should really inform some of the timing of the removal spells. Like there was some sloppiness the last game with the Mind Rack Demon and the Harness Lightning, uh, and now Baugh knows for sure that card's got to be on his radar. I have a theory. Okay, hit me. I hate these servants. You hate the servants? Yeah. Okay. I guess the counter to that is you have to have some amount of early defense for Grim Flare. Okay. And the removal spells are functional anyway because minus two, minus two, and minus four, minus four that you're getting from the grasp does help Snook and Spots get the Ishkana itself off the battlefield. Once the three fives off the battlefield, your creatures can plow through the one twos. It's some amount of blocking and some amount of trading, but the three five is a, is a wall. I, I, so those cards, I think, are going to be pretty good in the matchup anyway. Okay. And, you know, the ceiling's high. If you can't kill it, it's a, it's a race to your top end, and uh, it has the opportunity potentially to block a Grim player. All right. They might stink. I don't know. I, I, I see they have not been good in the game so far, so I, I respect the instinct. Um, but I'm guessing Ball has worse cards. I, I do like him on play, I think, a little bit. Yeah, because at least you're trading his second turn for your second turn. Yeah. And if he doesn't have a play on turn one, then you're pretty happy with that. Yeah, you're okay with that exchange. Game's like kind of slowing down. It's already in your favor a little bit because you're on the play. Right. Stuff like that. I also certainly respect the fact that playing a Marvel on turn three is a real thing in this matchup. Yep, can come up, and it's not the easiest thing for Snook to interact with. Looks like Ball is going to go down to six very, very quickly. Snook is going to take a little bit of a look at his hand. While Snook decides and Jacob shuffles up, we want to talk about the Aether Revolt pre-release that's going to be taking place here very, very soon, January 14th and the 15th. You can register today and get a limited edition playmat available at participating stores. This is Pandra Nalar, not to be confused with Chandra Nalar. It's a red panda. It rhymes enough. It, 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 it rhymes enough. It does rhyme just enough. Go to starcitygames.com slash pre-release. Find a participating store near you, and when you register today, you're going to get one of these playmats just for showing up January 14th and the 15th at your local Aether Revolt pre-release. Snook is also going to go down to six cards. Remember, after this game is over, one of these players is heading to the finals to play against either Ben Friedman or Jim Davis. Jim Davis already headed to the Players' Championship because he is your reigning Players' Champion. Jacob Ball will be going there too. The question is, will Adam Snook and potentially will, be, will Todd Anderson? We'll take a look at six. Long looks from both players here. Ball is going to scry. I'm guessing a lot of Ball's six card hands look pretty shaky, mm -hmm. but going to five is even worse. There's just no way that you can avoid these opening hands of one Eldrazi or some other weirdo. He's got a game trail. That is a traverse for Adam Snook. Ball kept his card on top. Looks like it's a hub. This is an attune. And now a vessel. Looks like he's going to search for a forest. Mm -hmm. Good like opening here for Ball. Looks like he's operating OK. We're going to see how Snook is operating. You know, again, he started with a Traverse, found a Lance, and we know he's got more Lance coming. And does he have a creature or a discard spell? Turn two land pass is not optimal. I'm going to tell you that much. Ball's got to be really happy, happy with the opening, though, here. Getting to... Make his land drops, fix his mana, get some energy, get some selection, get some stuff in his graveyard. Really solid opening. Smuggler's Copter here from Adam Snook. Well, 
Always a scary card to play against. Copter is so very, very powerful. There are removal spells that can take care of that thing, of course. Harness Lightning being the main one. There's a hub, up to three energy. Kozlek's Return's not going to do it, though. And it appears that Ball has Marvel Works in hand. You can see it as uh, deployed potentially as soon as next turn. Okay. There's Flare. Trigger. Beatdowns. Draw and discard here from Snook. He will discard. We're not sure. Scrounger. Okay. Pass it back over to Baugh. Three car types now in Snook's graveyard. Baugh are going to draw. Picked up a planes. Doesn't have to use energy to play the Marvel if he has one. Sigarda. Going to use an energy to cast that one. Pass the turn back. Looking to stabilize this board. Yep. I mean, this demands a removal spell and sucks up some damage in the worst case scenario. Best case scenario, Snook just can't attack. Yep. Now, there are some things to be worried about here. Blossomy Defense, Grasp, all that stuff. Right. But this 4-5 or five flyer, if it's not taken care of pretty quickly here, can really take over this game. Well, Ball doesn't even need it to really take over the game, given the way his hand is. He just needs to slow this action down. Sure. He's got the he's got the combo rolled up here. Or at least he'll, he'll have one look at it. Mm -hmm. It looks like it might just be Flayer attacking. So keep in mind that Blossoming Defense puts him at Delirium. Because he has an artifact creature and a sorcery in the graveyard. True. Also, keep in mind that Snook has made some pretty bold attacks so far in this match. If I'm in boss seat, I, you want to take it? I'm saying I'm a, it's in. There are some players where you know for sure this early in the game they're not going to do anything like that. Mm -hmm. If I'm in boss seat, it's, I have it in range that Snook might be. That might be what he's up to. Now, in fairness, last turn he went Smuggler's Copter on two, turn three, Flare with a green up. So yep. doing some work to showing Blossoming Defense could very well be in the hand. But a bluffing is definitely, if I'm in boss seat, I'm putting that in Snook's range. It's a good attack by Adam. A bunch of cards are going to go in the graveyard here. He'll play a land. He'll play a transgress. Okay. Uh, so that doesn't work because of Sigarda. Oh, yes. How about that Weme? Yes. Really good no block there from Ball. Really good. <laughs> <laughs> Much better than we that's realized. A, that's a nice looking no block. Much better than we realized. Also makes a little more sense why he played Sigarda first to protect his hand. A lot of good stuff going on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a pretty nice play. So I think Snook is not committed to playing it because he announced something. Yeah, that it can't. If he says transgress play. targeting you, then just back it up, put that yeah, in your hand. It's an illegal play there. All right, so Mind Rack Demon instead. Top four. They're going to the graveyard. All right, Jacob, time to untap. He's got Ishkana and Marvel in hand. That's a pretty good hand. Hub. Energy number five. Mishkana's not all that appealing right now. Just put the Marvel into play. Uh -huh. Can't get off the battlefield, so. Uh -huh. But can't activate the Marvel yet. No, because he needs energy off the Servant. Yep. But next turn, he can sacrifice the Vessel if he's feeling so inclined. That gets him to six and he can go. Let's 
an interesting game. Snook's attack last turn was really good. Yep. But if he makes a similar attack this turn, is Ball going to block? He knows about Transgress now, too, and Ball has a, a Marvel in hand. It's becoming or excuse me, he has an Ishkana in hand, which is important. Scrounger's going to come back. Comes back untapped, of course. So that means it can suit up the Copter. Yep. And Boss pausing, which I which I like. Yep. So I might have Harness Lightning. All right. But even if he has Harness in hand, I'm telling Snook, come and get it. Yeah. Because th this attack, everything so far has led up to blossoming defenses in my hand, and I want to play over the top in combat. There's a trigger. Snook thinking about discarding Transgress. I think this turn I want to block with Sigarda. Yep. Same. I th it's just card number six. You can go yeah, right yeah, away. Yeah, it's energy number six. I get to go right away. It's a creature in the graveyard for um, for, for Ishkana. Yeah. I think I just want to block. Also, I mean, this is this is a lot of damage to take, Yeah, too. there's also that. I mean, if you take this hit, you untap your Marvel misses, yeah, or, you, or you don't get to Delirium with the Vessel and Ishkana's off the table, mm -hmm. you might just die. Yep. So I... I I, I agree. If I'm in, if I'm in uh, pause spot here, I think Cigar's got to go in front of something. Huh. Well, this is the same. This is a path here too. Yeah, this gets him to six energy because he has to spend one, but he picks up two from the vessel going to the graveyard and then the servant going to the graveyard. Okay. Just curious to me. I mean, this this Sagarda is gonna have to trade. Got to do something eventually, with a, right? With a blossoming defense at some point, and I think Ball is. I mean, the blossoming defense is gonna be bad for him regardless. Don't get me wrong, but I think he's in a spot now where if he misses with the Marvel, it's really bad shape. Really bad news. He'll take a servant. And he takes what is he? he? Takes nine on this hit. Seven, nine. Yeah, he's gonna fall down to six. Grim Flayer going to trample over, which is going to control Snook's draw step. Those cards, Snook doesn't have any interest in. Does Snook have a follow-up here? Swamp. Traverse. Curious what Traverse finds right now. It's with Delirium. That looks good. That's good. I remember the... Uh, oh, no, he already got the Scrounger out, so yeah. that's... But he does have the two mana up, so if Ball has some sort of sweeper or removal spell, the Scrounger does come back right away. Yep. I mean, there's a lot riding on this marble activation now. Yes, there is, and he's going to activate right now. So, top six, picks to click. Emrakul's the best of the bunch. Ulamog's pretty darn good. Uh, that's a, I think we're looking at a whiff. I think that one's... We're close to it. I think that one stinks. I think that one stinks. And I don't know if Ishkana is going to be good enough in the face of a Virtuous Cure Hulk plus the size that Snook already has on the battlefield. And plus a lot of his creatures having trample. And the blossoming defense that we can pretty much assume at this point is in his hand. Well, Snook doesn't have it. He's played this game beautifully. <laughs> I'll tell, I'll yeah, tell, he, he's definitely much. played a spectacular game if yeah, it is not in his hand. Yeah, if he doesn't have that, he's played a real hell of a magic game. Two energy there from the Servant. Time to draw. Harness Lightning. Can Ishkana stabilize? And she's certainly going to try. Now, the benefit of this is the next Alpha Strike here from Snook. Assuming Ba is able to survive it, you get another Aetherworks Marvel activation, most likely. A lot of his creatures are going to die here, chump blocking. Mm -hmm. Time for Snook to untap and draw. What's interesting is if Slip doesn't have land number six, then he can't do the Gearhawk plus Blossoming Defense thing. Right. And he's been playing like he has Blossoming Defense all game long. Now here's Gearhawk. Let's see where he's going to put these counters. I mean, the, the shorthand here is you would like to get as many of your creatures to five power as you can because of the Sigarda and the Ishkana. Here he comes, Trigger. 
All right, it's all on the table now. Yep. There's no blossoming defense to worry about. Jacob Falls' life total is six. Got to figure it out now. I'm putting a big premium again, like last time, of getting the trampler off the battlefield. There's just long-term implications to allowing that stay around. Especially if he fires in next turn. Again, we're, we're pretty confident about blossoming defense. He could have found a grasp at this point. A, a, a trampler complicates things long term. The other side of that is he might not have the luxury of getting the flare off the battlefield. Well, he can't take the hit. I mean, he can take a little bit of trample, obviously. Right, but, but he might not be able to put six power in front. Yep. Because his most efficient way in terms of toughness to power to get the Grim Flare off the battlefield involves Sigarda plus the Servant. Understood. That gets him to a 6-7 in front of a 6-6. Six, six. Understood, understood. These blocks don't look bad to me. This would be Sigarda eating something. Sure. This would be Grim Some Flare dying. Yep. This would be Mine Rack even trampling over for four. No points of damage. No points of damage. You're going to get a lot of energy. You're going to get to spin the wheel again. And Ba only loses either Ishkana or the Servant. Mm hmm. And Ba going to line some different things up. He can go this route. Yeah, this is the 6 7 block that I alluded to before. Okay. This means that he would get to keep a little something here. He'd get to get rid of this. Yep. You like this block the best? I, th I think I prefer the initial block, but this one also looks good. This has Ball losing a lot. Yeah. But he kind of wants to make that happen because of the Aetherworks Marble. Okay. The more that Ball can generate trades, the better served he is. And then he ends up taking on this exchange one trampled. Uh, yes, one trample damage. I don't. Where is he taking trample from? Mine Wreck Demon. Oh, yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. He'll take one trample, he'll fall down yep. to five. Scrounger's going to die. But Snook doesn't have the mana left over to get the Scroungers back this turn, so it's at least a one-turn reprieve. Yep. And this is what the battlefield's going to look like now. Six energy here for Ball. Spin the wheel. He's got a lot of good hits. Yep. We know that. World Breaker, Ulamog, Emrakul's never bad. I think I may have just seen the promise end, but I'm not positive. He's got a lot to think about here. Yep. This is what's pretty... I, what I like about the Aetherworks deck, there are some draws where you just do your thing and that's the game. A lot of the games become pretty tactical. Combat math, creature keywords matter, and so forth, assuming that you aren't just running someone out. Mm -hmm. Are you positive? I mean, this is... I mean, if he's taking this long, obviously I must have seen wrong. Like, I, I, Even if there is an Emrakul in there, it's, I, I believe it's worth thinking about, but now I'm starting to believe that there isn't one in there. He's looking at... It looks just like a bunch of red removal. Yeah. Now, some of these creatures do have damage on them. Yep, and, and Tears can handle... Um, I, I think he can get the Mind Rack Demon or the Copter. This is kind of interesting, too, because if there's a Harness Lightning in here... Like, he can finish... He can zero it off, also. He yeah. can get three energy and try to re-up next turn, yep. too. There's a lot of different lines. He's going to finish off the copter using two energy. Okay. Yeah, one of the spiders went in front. Yep. But he's still a ways away energy-wise. Yep. He? The Marvel's not been kind just yet for Jacob Baugh. The draw is a tune. I think a tune gets him to six. I think it does too. I think he's got a harness and a servant there, so mm -hmm. he can he can get another spin at this. <laughs> yeah, I, I would think it through. <laughs> so <there's> <laughs> hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> there's a lot to think about. Right. There's a lot to think about. Well, well, the big question is, can he get to six and kill something? If he has to harness here for not lethal, just to get some energy going then uh, he really risks losing if the Marvel bricks on him. He probably loses at that point. Servant. Up to three. Up to six. Here we go. Yep. Okay. Here we go. All right, top six. 
six. That'll work. That'll Ooh, play. Ooh, long play. Ooh, long plays. Ooh, long plays. He hit. Yep. That'll play. That'll play. Any attacks? Huh. I'm looking to Ulamog the. I mean, you can. I guess there's no. I mean, I think you're free to. Right. Yeah. There's right? no. There's no haste or whatever. I, I want to so. get this over with. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Snook is without a board. We're gonna go over to Adam now. He'll draw a card. Whoo, boy. Jacob Ball is fighting. Adam Snook wants to close this darn thing out. But remember, chump blocking really isn't an option here against Ulamog. He doesn't have that, all that much time. Mm -hmm. So probably two turns here. We also got to remember there are scroungers hiding out in graveyards. Yep. But that's all of his mana. Yep. I mean, I mean, how much can he do over the course of a turn? All that good stuff. Now, the easiest thing here for Snook to do involves flying. Yep. You know, if there's a Mine Rack Demon here or a Smuggler's Copter, flying is a great place to be. There's at least a shot here because he's only got the one spider as a chump blocker. Presumably, do blossoming defense is still a thing. Well, he's just passed the turn, so now we're going to go back over to Baw. I wonder if the plan here is hope Baw has forgotten about the Scroungers. That he just sends in an, uh, uh, an attack for less than lethal, thinking that there's no haste. Well, he can attack for 16. Here is a tune with Aether. Because I don't know if there's any way now for Snook to win. Because I, I would assume the two Ulamog hits are just lethal without having to connect. Yeah, just mil 20, 20, mil 20. 20, yep. 20, yeah. I mean, maybe not as an exact count thing, but we've been playing several turns, and Snook has done some amount of looting and drawing of cards. I would assume he's at, you know, 41 or less, but uh, I'm not 100% there. Ball's got a forest off of the Attune. Two energy here. Curious to see what comes next here for Jacob. He wants a count. Yep. I mean, it's important here if it's two or three turns. Yep. I don't think it ultimately changes very much, but it's at least good to know. Here comes Ulamog. 32. Okay, yep. Plenty. I love attacking with nothing else, by the way. Right. No reason to. This is the plan, like you mentioned. He's not killing this thing, Yep. and you don't even need to connect. So play it as safe as you possibly can. Ball have any follow-up? Nope. Snook going to get back Scroungers. Going to remove a couple of creatures. Three twos back on the battlefield. Snook's got three blockers for three attackers. Is there any way for Snook to steal this thing? Uh, kill spell plus Blossoming Defense plus Bad Block. Two kill spells plus Blossoming Defense. Okay. Uh, I mean... It's asking a lot. Yeah. I mean, there are hands he can have here that are lethal. That's going to do it. Jacob Baugh is going to win this match here over Adam Snook. Three games to two. Nia Aetherworks will take care of Black Green Aggro. Todd Anderson is still alive.